Okay, I am here with Caldasia Media Productions. Is that pronounced correctly? That's pronounced correctly. All right, yes. this is Jason. I'm guessing you're the creator of everything. I'm, okay. Yep, I'm the creator of the game. Yes. Okay, this is a Space Fleet uh, war game. Yep, this is a space combat miniatures game. It's a squadron scale game, which means a typical force would probably have about three to eight warships plus a sorted sorted amount of supporting fighter craft. Okay. Um, and this, I mean, typically. All your fighter crafts are pretty much their tokens because they're they're yes. tiny compared to ships. Um, how long have you been like? How long has this game been around? How long have you been working on it? Um, Legends of Caladasia was originally released about two years ago in August of 2010. I've since added a bit to it, changed some rules, got a third alien race. It just came out at Origins here. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, the um, do you want to tell like a little bit about the races like? Is there any? Do you have some backstory for them, or what? What are the races called? So we have three races, like I mentioned. Um, first of all, we have the Aragul Empire. I guess we can show yeah. them like, right over here. This is basically the dominant force in this region of the galaxy at the time. They've had an empire for about thirty thousand years. They're actually a race of kind of dinosaurs, dragon-like people. Um, they've enslaved two other races, the Krylent and the Thalix, and they're pretty much a large bureaucratic style, sort of slightly fascist style empire. You know, their ships are actually, a lot of the planets are, say, are named like Minix number. So there's like Minix 1, Minix 2, Minix 3, because they're so bureaucratic. Yeah, they're all numbers. Yes. <laughs> it, it's crazy okay. like that. So the Surakari are the aliens that are attacking the Irigul Empire. They are an insect-like race. They're a race of sentient insects. So they're actually individual can think on their own. They're not like a, not your typical mass army swarm insect type people. Um, the reason they're attacking the Aragul Empire is actually unknown to the Aragul at this time. They're trying to figure it out. All of a sudden, they never even really knew about these guys, and they just started to launch this massive attack on their empire. Okay. And, and finally... You, you have a new one that just yes. came out this week? The, the newest one is called the Colath Guard. Now, these are a race of aliens the Aragul Empire discovered on the borders of their empire. What they know about the Colath Guard is that they can speak the language of the Krylon, which is one of the races the Aragul have enslaved. And they don't really know how they know the language. But the fact is, it's kind of a bit of a tricky political situation because you've got a race that obviously has some relationship with somebody you've enslaved, but you don't want them to know that you've enslaved them. <laughs> so there's already been one armed conflict between the Aragul and the Colath Guard after a bit of a miscommunication, which is depicted on the wall over there and in the rule book. And so the Ar Aragul are trying to negotiate some sort of basic truce at the time because they don't want to fight a two-front war, obviously, at this point. Yeah, yeah, definitely. doesn't usually turn out well. No, it doesn't. <laughs> um, I, I guess since you created all this, you made all of the rules, you, you've been doing playtesting. Do you yes. have like a, a, a fair amount of like friends, or do you have a team that helps playtest stuff? I've got a handful of people who helped me out through the past couple of years. Okay. Well, like, what's been like probably your biggest your biggest challenge making a war game? Is it actually making the models? Is it actually getting them produced? Is it fixing the rules right? or? Ironically, the hardest thing to produce are boxes. <laughs> it may sound crazy. That's why, like, my boxes are like, is a box a label on it, or these are some that the local game store can print up. The thing is, if you want a good quality box, like basically everyone else has, you're looking at a minimum of thousand units that you got to buy. And I don't produce the game in that kind of quantity, so I can't produce high quality boxes. It's funny. That's honestly the hardest thing I've had. I can't Hard, harder out. than getting sculpts. Yes. You, you heard it here first. It's it's something you don't think about. The how, but that's the way it is. It's just it's funny like that. Okay. But well, um, so what, I guess what edition of the rules are you on right now? It's kind of like a 1.5 ish. This is the original base rules here called Rise of the Surakari. Okay. I changed that a little bit a few weeks after the game came out to tweak a few things. But I started the public got their hands on it. But then the biggest addition was the Admiral Rules Pack, which basically made the game a lot more violent, a lot more destructive. Okay. Um, I guess you want to show us a, a little bit about, about sure. the game here? I've been running through how quick we'll set up these guys okay. over here. Run through a quick little... Yeah, we are good to go. All right, so we'll run through some of the basic core mechanics here. We have a Surakari frigate hanging out over here. It's going to be attacking the Aragul frigate. What you're going to notice, there are two stat cards here. Every warship in the game has a stat card that keeps track of their damage, has their weapons, all that kind of thing on it. So how movement works in this game, it's pretty simple and abstract. Each ship can move so many inches based on their engine power. For okay. example, the Surakari frigate can move 12 inches. So what, he, what would happen is he would normally move 12 inches straight forward. However, I'm going to bring him back here. At any point during his movement, he may stop and make a turn and then continue his movement. Okay. So he would go something like, say, four, eight inches forward, turn to face the enemy ship, and maybe go a few more inches straight forward. So you got a nice beat in the enemy ship just like that, ready to start opening fire. 
Um, well, for move, move, moving things along, he'll just sit still, kind of turn to face him. Okay. Then you do the fighter movement. Fighter movement's even simpler. Fighters move so many inches, you pick them up, and you kind of stick them wherever you want them to go. So we'll just go ahead and dump them all in a bit of a t giant fur ball here, and we'll resolve that dog fight in just a moment. This is a dog fight. <laughs> yes, big dog fight. Now, at this point, if you want it, if your warship's one or two, they can make one extra turn at the cost of a uh, reactor point, which makes some of the ship's energy. That'll allow you to make an extra turn in order to bring your weapons to bear if you need to bring your firing arcs um, on the enemy target. Okay. In this case, they're all set. So, what we do now is called the sensor phase. You're going to lock on and target ships. So, the Surakari ship would go ahead and put two sensor points on the Aragul frigate because it's going to fire at them. Um, the Aragul frigate will put one back on there, but we'll deal with that in a minute. Now we go into the fighter attack phase. This is where this big template I got over here comes in. You place it down over the giant dog fight. You're gonna, and so we're gonna have the Surakari fighters are gonna attack the Aragul. You count up your fighters you have under the template. In this case, we have one, two, three, four. And for each undamaged fighter, it gets two attack dice. So that's obviously four times two. It's gonna be eight attack dice here. I kinda like this. So this kind of just, it, this kind of denotes which ones are actually in this specific dog fight. Yes. I like that. It's just an easy way to resolve lots of dice rolling at once. You could do it one by one, but it's gonna be the same result as this. So four, four betters for these guys hit. In this case, I just did five points of damage to the enemy ships. Each fighter token takes two. So that's two, four, and five. And then the Aragul fighters get to go fire back. Now they fire back at full strength as damage is simultaneous. So they get eight dice as well. However, they get they hit in a five or better, but they get to reroll their first miss. Okay. So in this case, one wow, they actually got four hits right off the bat, and they could reroll these. Giving them they wow. actually got seven hits going back. So after that vicious melee, you're looking with that kind of a situation right there. Okay. So lots of death, but it's a great way to resolve it quick and simply. Okay. So uh, with stuff like this, um, how do you, um, I guess, how do you know how what you hit on? Do they have a stat or the stat that says what they hit on, or do you compare stats? Or every weapon in the game, whether it's on a warship or a fighter, has what's called a fighter value. Okay. And that's the value you got to roll on a D6. You got to roll that or higher to hit a fighter. Okay. So for example, the Surakar interceptors were using the interceptor beam, which has a fighter value of four or better. That's why they had to roll four or better to hit. Okay. Whereas Aragul Empire guys were using the um, light Gatling gun, which hits on a five or better, but because it has a double R special ability, they could reroll their first misses. Okay, so do do guns like that, they hit on like a four on fighters, is that something that you typically only have on fighters for, for dog fights kind of yes. things? Okay. either that, or they're also, similar weapons exist for anti-aircraft weapons on the actual captain Okay, ships. yeah, so if you have some ships with some really good anti-fighter yes. defense, then we'll have yep. some. Okay. There's actually an Aragul, actually have an anti-aircraft frigate, which has lots of anti-aircraft guns and shoots guys down like crazy. Now you move on to the actual fight, warship attack phase, sorry. And normally you roll one gun for each weapon that's going to fire. So in this case, we'll just show you how the Surakari frigate attacks the Aragul frigate. Now he's going to hit on a three or better because his, the attacker's weapon systems are in the green. In this case, we hit both dice hit. But let's say, for example, it was actually a miss. Well, what happened then is I could spend a sensor point that's on the target to re-roll the attack, the six, re-roll the attack that missed. And in this case, it'll still be a miss. I can't re-roll it again. Okay. And one neat thing you can do is anyone can use a sensor point on the target, not necessarily the attacker who placed it down. So you could have someone who's hiding all the way back here who's out of weapons range put their sensor points on a ship up front to support someone who actually can fire at them. Okay. And in this case, well, let's go back and say this did actually hit to show you how damage works. <laughs> this would be each weapon has so many points of damage. The weapon I just fired, is this is two points of damage. Now, this, because of a special ability, this, this hit actually caused three points of damage. So I did five points of damage to the Aragul frigate. Warships have different armor banks here. Each armor bank basically represents the idea that um, the armor on these ships is like a nano-liquid armor that can rotate around and intelligently absorb damage as best as possible. Okay, it's so a single battery, so all five damage must go to one armor bank. You cross off five circles, left to right, one row at a time, just like you're reading a book. All right, so if you only do a little bit at a time, they can start getting mitigated, spread around, that kind of thing. And now that I crossed off one red circle, that means that's going to cause internal critical damage. So after all the weapons fire goes back and forth, you roll for critical hits. We're going to jump to that right now. Let's say this ship actually took four critical hits this turn from weapons fire. What you would do, you would break it up into groups of two, and you're going to roll one die for each group of two. We have a three and a two. What you do is you go down to your critical hit systems here. Weapons is one, and you count down to determine what system was hit. 
three was hit, which would be one, two, three sensors. And because there's two little critical hit tokens in that group, you're going to cross off two points of damage to the sensors, and okay. now the frigate sensor system was destroyed. Over here, two. Cross off two hits of the engines. His engines are now red, meaning he can't go his full speed. He has to reduce speed for the rest of the game. Okay. Now, without his sensor points, can he just not allocate sensors, or can he not use sensors, he, or both? He just cannot allocate sensors. Okay. Very cool. And that's the basic gist of a turn. I guess there's one more little mechanic I can show you that's kind of cool. In addition to having a whole, whole crazy dogfight like that, fight, most fighters can also attack warships. It's called a precision attack. Their goal is to dive in and actually target the individual systems precisely. For example, here are the critical hits. It was random what got hit. But if you were actually to succeed with a precision attack, you'd be able to choose what system is damaged. Okay. Therefore, allowing you to shoot off and knock someone's gun down, maybe shut down their engines and they lose control, all sorts of things like that. It's a great way to just balance the battle in your favor. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Well, did you have any, I guess, seeing some of the mechanics, I know the thing that I've encountered with my game I've been trying to make, is that it's hard to make a space fleet game and then also not include so many mechanics and physics and like is it did you have trouble deciding whether or not when a ship's engine shut off they keep drifting or if they need to turn while moving forward and all of that kind of fun stuff it's, when you get to the physics of space combat it's really interesting because the reality is we don't know what space combat is really going to be like um, and because of that, I'm not trying to guess what it's really going to be like. I'm trying to create a game. It's a game. It's a tactical. It's a tactical game. It's all about movement and positioning. So a lot of conceptions about how space combat works come from the movies. You know, we see what's happened in Star Wars, what happens in Battlestar Galactica, whatever it may be. And the reality is that's just as made up as what I've got here. So I'm more interested in creating a fun, enjoyable experience that offers a tactical challenge and trying to fit into some preconceived notion of what space combat should be like. Awesome. Very cool. All right, well, I guess I'll, I'll put a link up, guys, in the bottom here. And thanks a lot. This is Adam from 40K Nation. Thank you very and, much. And uh, this is Jason here from Legends of Caldassia. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. All right, thanks.